This is a short video for my finance class, managerial finance. Uh, the topic on this particular video is speculative markets, speculation, and their macroeconomic impact on our economy. This is perhaps particularly appropriate today in 2012 based on what happened to the housing market in the United States between 2007 and 2009. And we're still dealing with the lingering effects. We take stock markets as an example and we'll take the experience leading into the Great Depression in 1929 uh, to try to illustrate what can happen in a market in, when it becomes over speculated and then the resulting consequences for the economy if it happens on a, on a large scale. In 1929, in the 1920s, leading up to the Great Depression, the stock market was doing very well because the economy was doing very well. The stock market is somewhat a, a reflection of the profitability of businesses and their expected profitability into the future. Uh, in the 1920s, things were going pretty well in the economy. Businesses were doing pretty well in term, terms of profits, and stock prices were rising. At that time, it was possible to buy stock on margin. And what we mean by on margin is that the person wanting to buy stock could go to his or her stockbroker and they could put 10% of the purchase price down as a down payment and borrow the other 90% of the price of the stock. And look what happened. You could go in with $100 borrow another $900 from your broker and you could be the proud owner of $1,000 worth of stock buying on margin, 10% margin in this case. But if you did this and the market's rising anyway, suppose that six months later or a year later you could turn around and your stock could increase, let's say, to $2,000. What can you do now? Imagine for a moment that you sell your stock you pay back mom who you borrowed the hundred dollars from. You pay back your broker his nine hundred dollars plus some you know, rather small interest, okay? And what do you have left? You still have a thousand dollars profit. And what if you take that thousand dollars now and put that down against or along with what you can borrow from your broker, remember, another ninety percent? You borrow ninety thousand from him, I'm oh, sorry, nine thousand from him. And the next thing you know, you've got $10,000 worth of stock. Feeling pretty good about it, right? I mean, you started out with $100, look what a financial genius you are. And then suppose the $10,000 grows, and to make it simple, it doubles to $20,000. You sell it, you pay yourself back your $1,000 original investment, you pay your broker back his $9,000 plus some interest, but more or less, you've got $10,000 left. What can you do with that? And again, assuming the market's still going up, pretty easy concept, isn't it? You borrow another $90,000, and now you have $100,000 worth of stock. Feeling pretty smart? Feeling pretty rich? Oh, heck yeah. And in fact, what are you going to be feeling like if that $100,000 worth of stock doubles? Think about it. You pay yourself back, you pay your broker back, you got a hundred thousand dollars profit, what can you do with it now? Well, you could invest it again by putting ten percent down. With a hundred thousand dollars, you could own a million dollars worth of stock. Okay? Do you see what I'm saying? People found it very easy to go in and invest in stocks, and then that investment became not based on the value of the company and the profits it was making. But they began to buy stock in these companies just because the stock prices were going up. And in fact, the stock prices were going up much faster than the value of the companies was growing. And that's when we get into a highly speculative or speculated market. An over-speculated market is when people are buying an asset, in this case stocks. They're buying them based on the theory of the greater fool. I'll pay anything for these stocks. Because I think there's a bigger fool than I who will buy it from me later at an even higher price. And so people are buying like crazy, and they're buying at prices that have nothing to do 
were the real intrinsic value of the asset, of the stock. You with me so far? This is called over-speculation. When these prices get bid up to unrealistic heights, and at some point, somebody smart enough holding those, those stocks is going to look around and say, whoa, this, this just cannot endure. This won't, won't sustain itself. We better sell now while we can. Or he gets up there to the point, the other guy, he says, boy, we got these really expensive stocks. Let's sell them for a higher price. And suddenly nobody's buying. Because everybody else has said, hey, we think that's a little bit overpriced. Well, when the prices hit that peak, and the owners of those assets look around and realize nobody's going to buy it from them for a higher price, we refer to that as a Minsky moment named after the economist, who, who basically said in capitalism, you're going to have an economy that's, that's prone to these sort of speculative bubbles. When the, the masses flee in and find a cheap way to get into the investment process, and they start investing and investing, and investment becomes speculation, and speculation becomes over-speculation, and over-speculation becomes lunacy. The Minsky moment, that's the look. Uh oh. And then the prices fall. Nobody can sell. Now, this happened with the stocks. And what else? It's happened now. Well, it happened with the dot com uh, bubble, but now it's happened here in the, the early parts of the uh, 21st century in the United States first with the collapse of our housing market. We were putting people into houses with no money down, we were putting people into houses they knew they couldn't afford. But they would buy them to keep them for six months, a year, two years, and scrape together those payments so they could sell that house at a higher price up here. And so we had people taking very foolish risks, and the ones who got in early and sold out made a lot of money. But what it led to was a bubble in stock market, or sorry, real estate prices, to where houses were valued in, in the market way above their intrinsic value. How did that happen? We'll talk about that in class. Mostly nobody was keeping an eye on it. Mostly a lot of the policy makers were saying, hey, markets are perfect. Markets will compensate for that risk. Markets won't let those prices go up. Because markets take into account all the risks, all the variables, and markets determine the, the correct price. Now we're wrong. All right? And our lack of oversight on those markets, allowing those prices to go up, even encouraged by, at that time, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Alan Greenspan a believer in free markets, didn't learn the lessons from the past, that markets sometimes tend to get out of control and become over-speculated. And while, yes, they will adjust eventually, when they do adjust, it's very painful for the people holding those high-priced high -priced assets. But look at it on the macroeconomic level. When the housing market burst, the bubble burst, it wasn't just the people in those houses who were hurt. Because now all housing prices begin to fall. But the people who are stuck holding those mortgages find they can't keep the house. They can't make the payment. What happens next? They're, they cut back their spending. Remember spending was a central element of our macroeconomics discussion. They cut back their spending. When they cut back their spending, nobody wants to go out and buy a new house. We're seeing prices fall, so why not buy an existing house? What happens, what happens to the construction industry? With no demand for new houses, you've got a loss of jobs there. And this whole thing multiplies out through the economy and it has a major impact on our economy, reducing aggregate demand, reducing spending, raising unemployment. And all this because we had a market get speculated out of, out of touch with reality. When the Minsky moment hit, the disaster began. And here we are now, what, four years later? We're still trying to dig our way out of it. So, the point of the discussion is to be aware of speculation, that is, buying something with not necessarily having anything to do with its intrinsic value, but buying it because you think you can sell it later at a higher price, what are referred to as the theory of the greater fool. And keeping an eye out for markets that are becoming over-speculated. And if they happen on a large scale, a macroeconomic scale like housing, be aware of the dangers and the harm that can occur to the entire economy. All right, thanks.